Well, greetings to you today. You know, we recently celebrated a, a fun day. It's called Valentine's Day, and it's a day where, of course, we love each other always, but it, it's a special day to express your love towards your loved ones and those around you in meaningful ways. It can be just as easy as a pat on the back as you walk by saying, I appreciate you. It can be getting somebody a cup of coffee. It can, it can be expressed in so many little ways, simple ways, but everybody needs love. Remember that old song, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Well, God has deposited his love, himself, in us. He lives here. And what he has to give is that sweet love to the world through you. So be at ease. Don't be uh, self-conscious. Don't do silly things, but do meaningful things as led by the Holy Spirit. One of the words I shared with the staff this morning was taken from 1 Corinthians 13, which is, we all think of it as the love chapter. But I just picked out a, a small portion. Let me share a few words with you from 1 Corinthians 13. It's talking about the expression of love, what it looks like, what it feels like. It says, love suffereth long. Oh, really? We can take a step back from that and thinking, I'm not really interested in suffering long. But evidently, there's power in the love that is within you, which is God that is willing to endure and embrace the suffering that's in your life, even if it's long. He is able to come through to you in such a way that that suffering gets turned almost into a delightful ministry. It's the truth. I've experienced it myself in the past. Love suffereth long. Love is kind. It's not sharp. It's not, I mean, sharp words, um, irritated. And we've all experienced that. But we need to keep this in mind. He's saying, well, that's not really what I'm about. So this is a course correction for you. Watch the tongue. Watch the sharpness of your tongue and the words. Love doesn't envy. Love vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Hmm. I pray that for all of us. That there's not areas in our life that cause us to feel puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Love does not seek her own. Wow. It's not self-seeking. And there's that self-core within us. You've heard me mention that before in other videos. And that self-core always looks for something that will minister to self and build ourselves up. Now, he's saying real love, the love of God, as it invades your life, changes all that and brings adjustment to it and makes us such that 
we love others more than we love ourselves. I don't mean that in an unhealthy way. I mean it in the most wholesome, healthy way God purposed from the beginning. So love doesn't seek her own. It's not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. Oh, thinks no evil ever? Like when I'm mad at, oh, I said mad. When I'm irritated? When something didn't go my way? Hmm. Those points of flesh can pop up in us, can't, it? can't they? And when the flesh is stirred, you can feel irritated, provoked. Maybe you speak out something sharp, or you're thinking it. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. I'm sure that means the truth of his word, the truth of his life, the truth of the fruit of the Spirit. But I have to tell you, there was a time in my life when I was actually uh, in a time of counseling with a former pastor, loved Dick and Marilyn Williamson. And he had a way of nailing something. I would be talking about an issue or something that I was upset about, and he'd listen quietly. And then, like an arrow, he'd speak a word of truth. I remember one time saying, that was a zinger. Do you know what I mean by a zinger? It came quick, it came fast, and it went right into my heart. I knew it was truth. And in the moment, I didn't like it, but the fact that it was truth, there was an anointing on it. And when there's an anointing on a word, you can't, you can't shake it off. Have you noticed that? It's a zinger. <laughs> it goes in like, Oh my goodness, that was truth. I'm undone. God needs to change something. I just heard, really heard for the first time, a truth that I needed to know. Love will do that, real love. That's not out to get you but perhaps just in a phrase that's spoken to you, you think, oh, I heard that. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It endures all things. What are you thinking about the word endure? Life is life, and there are situations that come our way that you think, I, I want out of here. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. But he's saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm hitting the pause button. I want you to pause here, because I want this to work in your life in such a way your life is changed. And without this ingredient or this situation or this person or this relationship or whatever it is, without that, you'll remain the same as you are. And his whole deal, <laughs> his whole heart, his whole purpose is about changing us into kingdom people. Less fleshly, less self-absorbed, kingdom-minded, kingdom people. And His love and the love He's put within us will do that. But it's a process. It is a process. Let Him do it. 
And I love this. It's like the period at the end of the sentence. All these things about love and how it might work. And, and it says in verse 8, Love never fails. Think of that. It never fails. It's eternal. It's from heaven to earth. It's godly, not fleshly. It's a thing of the spirit, not human effort. Love. His love. His spirit, his working in our lives. Changes us. And it says then that love never fails. Let him have his way with you. Change you. Open your heart. Open up to things you've been holding on to because you feel like you're right. Where's that getting you? Let it go. Open your heart, open your hands. Remember that old song, I surrender all? As we surrender all, the changes begin to come. It's almost like heaven invades our life. And we find things shifting and moving and changing and we think, I could never have done this myself. And that's the truth. His Spirit has come to make you everything God designed you to be. You will glorify Him in all ways. God bless you today.